Bitcoin mining should be open source. Closed source is anti-ethical, as Scoot stated. Hey guys, Wonklo here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really great day. I'm currently filming this with my phone, so therefore probably the voice, um, the video quality is not the best. But nevertheless, I have a BitAix open source Bitcoin miner. This is a project that I will link in the video description down below. So if you want to check this out, you can take a look on it in there. And yeah, in today's video, I want to talk about three major things. The first thing is that I want to talk about the BitAix PCB and the overall structure and what this device actually is and what you can do with it and what you can ex expect from it. The second thing is I want to show you how you can program this device. Um, as you can see, I have a couple of cables here. I soldered them onto the device. And the last thing is I want to show you a website where you actually can buy this device pre-built but still need to program it. And I also have a coupon code on this with zero commission for me. But 5% off for you guys. But yeah, this, this will be in, in, the later, in, in one of the latest sessions or sections in this video. So just take a look in the video description if you want to skip to a certain... Uh, to a certain time in this video you can do this and you can just skip to the part that you want to see uh, yeah so okay what is this device this is a bitcoin miner i use this for bitcoin solo mining it is using the bitmain uh, bm what is it 1397 chip i guess this is the chip from the end miner s17 and I am currently hashing at around 199 giga hashes, as you can see up here. Um, you could overclock this to around 400 giga hashes, so something in respectively like the Gecko Science Compact F or whatever it's called. I currently just have this at around 200 giga hash. I'm playing around with it. I'm uh, just taking a look on what it can actually do and how the temperatures are performing because this device currently has roughly 70 degree uh, celsius so therefore it is pretty toasty i would say so i need to check on how i can actually yeah overclock modify this or anything else so basically this is a bitcoin miner you can try to use this as a pool miner but i prefer to use this as a solar miner and i mine to ck pool to the solar pool that is commonly used among all solar miners yeah basically that is this device you you need a five volt power source and uh, i also have a power brick somewhere laying around here here i have a power brick so then there's a little fan on it and there is a esp32 s and this is connecting over Wi-Fi with the internet and is actually managing the chip that is sitting underneath this heatsink here and uh, yeah basically that's it so what I did to this device is I soldered on in the first place I soldered on here a couple of cables um, this connector that you can see maybe let me see if I can zoom into this here or maybe we can use this one uh, the connector that you can see down there in the middle, um, this is a so-called JTAG connector. And I was tinkering about this due to the fact that this damn cable that you need to program this device cost roughly 50 bucks plus shipping, plus taxes. So I'm not going to do this and I haven't done this. So what I did is, let me quickly grab this, I got me a USB device this one and i will link this in the video description down below so that you can also take a look on this if you want i uh, plugged in a couple of cables then i soldered a couple of cables to this device because luckily the creator of this open source board scoot he managed to put a couple of debug ports on this device especially uh here on the, on the 
downside of this device and you can easily solder on a couple of cables a couple of jumper cables as you can see to this and therefore create a serial connection with your pc and then you just connect these cables while well, those cables with this usb device this is a serial to usb bridge and then you can actually program this device on the computer it took me a couple of days to figure everything out especially i had to do a couple of private things i was not focused all the time on this device due to the fact that i had to do lots of other things and uh yeah, I'm also playing around with other projects, as you might know. Let me jump over to the computer to tell you a little bit more about this device. And then I will come back to the device and show you how you can connect it and what you need to solder on later on. So now we are on my computer and I opened the sheet I got from Jacob, the individual who is selling pre-built devices like the Bid Eggs. And you just need to program it on your own he also has a couple of instructions and scripts on how to do this with linux and how you can uh, do this with a couple of different approaches in this example he just states two different approaches while the esp programmer with two different types of cables and this might seem a little bit off but this explanation is quite good and he explains everything a step that you need to do and the good thing about this is that basically every step is kind of the same unless two points that we need to change later on due to the fact that we do not use the esp programmer board which just costs around uh, 20 to 30 bucks on on amazon um, but i will post you probably a couple of links from aliexpress where they are way cheaper in the video description down below so you can check them out he created the script and he explains everything how to use everything and how you can actually program this device because what he does is he builds the bit eggs together he solders all the parts that he needs onto it then he checks it and if everything is working correctly then he ships them to you with ups so therefore the shipping is pretty fast it was here in my country in germany after three to four days and he was shipping this from canada i believe so therefore it was really quick and i was really happy about this then i needed a couple of days to tinker a little bit with this device and then i finally got it working and i could program it so what do we need to do the first thing we would probably need to do is to install the esp idf v4.4.4 but all you need to do is um, and i will put all the links in the video description just remember this what you need to do is to download this and in today's video i will just state everything about windows i will not explain on how to use this on linux maybe i will do this in the future but i'm not sure so what you need to do is to download the esp idf and there's a link you just click on it and then you should be on this website and you can download the windows installer on here you just choose the version that you want in this case uh, here is the 4.4.4 the offline installer just download this install this on your device the second thing that you need is visual studio code if you don't know what this is just download it and install it it's basically a a program where you can actually program stuff and that's especially what we're gonna do today. Yeah, that's not a good explanation on, about what Visual Studio Code is, but for all the people who don't know or never have heard about Visual Studio Code, it's a piece of software that you need to program, especially the thing that we wanna program the bit eggs in today's video. After you've done so, as he states, you can download the ESP IDF extension. You could do this over GitHub. What you also could do is if you installed a visual studio code just go over to the extensions tab here and look for esp idf and as you can see up here it is there you just click on it you install it and you should be good to go after this you can download the actual esp miner software from scott uh, that's his github repository what you need to do is Two different things you need to clone this github repository and you need to check out to a certain branch to the nonce checking i will not state on how to do this in this video it's it's pretty simple and straightforward just google it if you don't know how to do this 
So the next thing that he is doing is he's using a ESP programmer developer board. And on this, you can use two different types of cables, the mini JTAG or this tech connector device. And this cable that you see to the left hand side here, this single cable costs roughly 50 bucks and I was not willing to do so. So I did it another way. And I just used the board that I showed you previously, the USB stick, that's a UR to USB bridge, a serial to USB bridge, and I used this device to program the BitX. What have we done? We have installed the ESP IDF. We have also installed Visual Studio Code and we put in the extension for Visual Studio Code. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go into Visual Studio Code and in here we have a setting or a section called view and we need to click on this. In there we need to click on the comment palette and in here, if you don't see anything of ESP IDF, just put in ESP dash IDF and it should list a lot of commands. And all we need to do is to open in the first place to open the device configuration, device target, select the ESP minor nonce checking folder. So what we're going to do is we click on view common palette uh, device configuration I guess it was device target and then I just select the actual folder that I'm currently in so I'm currently in the, my github repository folders in my documents on my windows machine and therefore I'm, I'm in this folder the next thing that he states to do is we need to select the device port if you don't know how, how this is going to work let me quickly show you we just open up the device manager and in here we have a couple of com ports let me quickly plug in the USB device that you see what I'm talking about. So you can see I have COM3 and COM4 available at the moment. I plug the USB device in, give it a second, and here we have the USB device serial port on COM9. The COM9, that's the port that we're going to use. It's a little bit different to Ubuntu or to any other Linux distribution that you're going to use. As you can see here, dev, TTY, USB, and then the number of the USB device that you have plugged in. But for Windows, it's the COM port. And in my example, it's COM9. Probably if you plug in this device to your computer, you get another COM port and not the COM port 9. As I stated in my example, it's COM port 9. So what I'm going to do is I click on view, common palette, device configuration, device port, and then I can put in the COM9. So I just put in COM9 and it should be good to go. So the next thing that he states we need to do is we need to adjust the flash board weight. Um, this is something that is needed. The device gets configured correctly. So let me put this over here, the common palette, device configuration, flash board weight. And normally if you open up in Visual Studio Code, the folder of this GitHub repository, the nonce checking tree, uh, it should automatically be in there, the 460,800 board rate. If not, put it in there and press enter after you've done so. The next thing that he wants us to do is to open the OpenCD config files and then select the interface that we need. So we're going to do this, common palette, um, device configuration, OpenCD config file. And in here we have the ESP32 S3 bridge, bridge CFG. Just press enter on this. It should select automatically your device that you gonna use. So you need to have this USB device that I showed you plugged into your computer before you gonna adjust all those settings so that it selects the right one. The next thing he wants us to do is to click on the common palette and add a VS configuration folder. This will create a configuration folder. So we click on the common palette, open now the common palette and what ESP add VS code configuration folder. And this just creates a configuration folder, but I already have done so, so I don't need to do this. The next or the last step that we need to do in Visual Studio Code is to open an actual ISP, uh, ESP IDF terminal. Therefore, just click on the common palette again and click on open ESP IDF terminal. And again, if you don't see all those commands, just put them in ESP IDF and then search for terminal 
and there it is open ESP IDF terminal and now we need to do a special thing we need to set the target so we need to put in idf.py set dash target ESP 32s3 with this command we will set the target to an actual ESP 32s3 so that our um, our programming code here in the background knows what it needs to do then to the special part now we need to come over to the menu config so now we actually program this device we do not we do not upload all the files to the ESP on the bit eight board but we program it previously or before we actually do this so therefore we just need to put in idf.py menu config so this just needs a second and then it loads a new overview let's say configuration done and now we are in our overview so what we're gonna do here is we need to configure two things we need to configure our stratum and we need to configure our wi-fi configuration so that the device actually has a connection to the wi-fi so let me quickly see i move this a little bit over so we go down to streaming configuration and in here you can actually see my solo.ck pool address that i'm currently using i will probably blur this but nevertheless just go down here press enter and put in your actual stratum username you can put a point whatever point worker one point worker two point, point worker three whatever you would like to use um, at the end of your actual bitcoin address and then this this worker name will be appended to your actual bitcoin address and you will see this in your solo ck pool overview so let me exit out i just press the escape key i now press the escape key again i go down to wi-fi configurations and in here you can see that i have selected my uh, home net wi-fi and i also put in the wi-fi password for this so keep in mind you need to put it in there and then you can exit out of this the last thing that you can do is to actually configure the bit eggs and adjust a little bit how fast the chip should go so you just go to the bit eggs configuration and you probably leave the ac core voltage to 1400 millivolts and the ASIC hash frequency you can adjust um, i currently have this at 425 megahertz um, Scoot was stating to me that 450 is a stable configuration but it was getting a little bit too toasty for me so I just keep it at 425 at the moment I will probably play a little bit with it around in the next couple of days and maybe update you guys on this but yeah that's it what you do after that you press the Q and it should prompt you do you want to save this and you press then the yes key let me do this quickly again i go in the menu config let me quickly change something so i go to the bit x configuration and i change this to 450 i go to q save configurations i press yes and it has changed a couple of files now to the tricky part we will move back to my phone and i will record and show you where you need to actually solder on the couple of things and what else you need so we are now back at our bit eggs let me quickly take a look on how the temperature is going we're at 71 degrees celsius it's a little bit toasty i'm not sure if i like this setting or if i need to adjust it a little bit yeah let me see currently the fan is blowing outwards so he's trying to suck all the air in and uh, yeah the giga hash is also not that good um, I'm sorry guys for the noises in the background but yeah what are we gonna need to actually program this device so as I stated before you need this kind of USB device and um, there's a special one this one has a couple of different walls that it can adjust to the VCC port the VCC port is basically the plus line of uh, your DC line and you need to set this to 3v3 so 3.3 volts because the esp32 s3 this little device over there this runs on 3.3 volts therefore you need to use 3.3 volts what else do we need uh, a little button you just need one little button and you need a 10k ohm resistor uh, i'm not sure if this is spelled correctly in english but i hope so 
you need to you need this to actually reset the ESP32 correctly. Uh, let me take a look on the downside of this BitX device. So on here, let me see if I can actually get this that you see what I'm talking about. Okay, here you can see I have soldered on four cables. I have soldered on a cable to the TP17. This is the enable pin. That's uh, a cable that we want to connect with the button and the 10K resistor. Then we also have the TP22. This is the uh, RX, I believe. Yeah, this should be the receiving channel and the TP, what is it, 18 probably next to it. Uh, the red cable, this one is the TX channel, so the transmitting channel. And the TP23, this one is the IO channel. Um, you need to connect this to ground to actually boot the device into the into the boot mode so yet that you can actually override it so what else do you need despite the fact that you need one of those devices and as i stated you have a discount code that you will find in the video description down below and you will get five percent off and i get zero commission this discount code is just for you guys i don't get any benefit from this it's just for you so enjoy it if you want to use it and uh, check out the shop from Jacob. He's a really nice guy and I love his work and really shipping all the devices really fast to you if you order from him. But yeah, that's all about what you need to solder on. So you actually need a solder iron to do so. Um, maybe you have a friend uh, who has a soldering iron and a couple, uh, a little bit of experience in soldering, or you just buy yourself a soldering iron with a little bit of uh, solder wire, as I have here a little bit. And you just solder on the downside of this board to the actual ports that I showed you. Then I have a breadboard. A breadboard is basically just a board where you can plug in all those jumper wires that you can see here. And uh, I use this just for the convenience because otherwise I would, need, I would need to solder a little bit more. And I don't want to do this, I'm lazy, dude. We need four cables from this actual USB device here. So we need the VCC port, we let me yeah, we need the VCC port, we need the ground port, we need the TX and we need the RX. I also will put down in the video description a link to the overview of this uh, of this bit X board so that you get an overview where you need to connect what um, so that you understand what you need to do. From the basic understanding, you need to put the TX to the RX from this device. So this one is transmitting and in order to receive it, you need to connect the transmitting wire to the receiving wire. So I put in my, let me see, TX in my case is blue, the blue wire here. I would connect to the yellow wire in my example and the green wire in my example here is the rx i would connect to the orange wire that i have here that is the tx so that you can actually receive and transmit from uh, the esp then what you need to do is um, i have the blue cable here this is the io port or the tp but i will have everything in the video description uh, what is this? TP2023, I'm sorry about this. Um, so the TP23 wire, uh, this is the I.O. port. This needs to go to ground. So I have two wires here. This is ground and VCC. So plus a negative. Negative, negative is the black one and positive is the white one in my example. So I will just connect my uh, red to the white and my black to the black. So I have negative and positive on this breadboard. Then I have a connection from the negative, from the ground over here, and I connect the IO port to the actual negative. So that when it boots up, you put it into the boot mode or the yeah, the, the actual programming mode. But in order to get into this, we also need to use the reset button. So what we're gonna do here is we connect the TX and RX and from my positive, for my positive wire from the plus side, I go over to, to this button, 
from this button I have a 10k ohm resistor and then I will use the black wire here from the bit eggs and this one is the EN pin, the actual enable pin. I put it next to this uh, 10k resistor so then if I press this button um, the 3.3 volts go through this button through the 10k ohm resistor and into the enable pin into the bit X so that when I press this button once it actually resets and while I'm pressing this button I put in the USB device in my USB port on my PC and as soon as the USB stick is in the USB port of my PC I still press the reset button then I pull out the enable pin and release the button then this ESP32 is into the actual boot or configuration mode and I can program it one thing that you need to be aware of don't have the device plugged in at this moment because it is not gonna work you want to program it you don't want to mine on it because there's nothing programmed on the device so you cannot actually mine so you don't have it plugged in as like I do currently because this device is mining at the moment but yeah you don't want to have this plugged in now you probably call me and say yeah one clue so okay I have my TX I have my RX connected I also have the enable pin and I have the IO pin connected but where the heck do I put my ground and my 3.3 volts actually to the ESP32 that it gets powered on yeah fun thing uh, up here Underneath the small display, you have a couple of debug ports. The first one is ground, the second one is 3.3 volts. So from my, bed, from my breadboard, I just take two wires from negative and positive and go over to the actual ground and 3.3 volts. Pretty simple, right? Then the ESP32 is programmed or is in a, in, in a mode that it can be programmed. Let me jump back to the PC to show you what you need to do next. Okay, we have connected our ESP32 on the actual BitX board with our USB to UART bridge device, the, li the little USB stick. We also have set up in this terminal the actual configuration for our device. Now there's only one thing left that we want to do. The last command that we want to put in here is this one, the idf.py-pcom9 flash monitor. What does this? What this does is basically it opens up the ESP IDF uh, configuration. It tells them, okay, I want to use the COM9 port because this is the port that I use on my PC. You need to check on your PC if you also use COM9 or different port. This is the port that the USB to UART bridge sits and I want to flash. And the last command monitor is to see what is currently happening. So that if you have this connected, you can, after it has been flashed, you can put out the USB device, the USB bridge, out of your USB port, then you can plug in the power to the bit X miner, and then you can put in the power back into, uh, or you can put in the USB bridge back into your PC, and you will see a live view of what's happening on the ESP32 and how it is communicating with the pool that you have configured, and you can actually see if you find any shares or not, or you can also debug if something is going wrong. So that's it about how to program the device. I hope you like this video and you enjoyed it. If you do so, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on further videos. And now I want to talk about the shop and the actual coupon that I got for you guys. So here we go. The last part I want to show you is the actual coupon code that I got for your device. As you can see, I wrote Jacob and I told him, hey, I'm Von Cho and I'm doing a couple of YouTube videos and I just want to ask if there is any possibility that I can get a coupon code for all my viewers on his shop. And he told me, yeah, sure, we can totally do this. Um, his device is pretty cheap considering how much all the parts costs. So he, he is giving us a 5% discount till the 9th of July. So if you want to get a device that is pre-sorted and you just need to program it with the devices that I showed you, a couple of cables, a 10K resistor and this USB bridge, you can order this, you get 10 US dollars off and 
there you go you have your own solo miner and you don't need to pr uh, you don't need to pay those expensive prices on something like a gecko science or maybe you get the gecko science a little bit cheaper it depends on what you want to do this device is completely open source i love the project and if you want to order a device like this check his shop out at algosaps.com shop and use the coupon code jbit dash bit aches dash five to get five percent off everything in caps lock thank you guys for watching i hope you love this video if you do so give me a thumbs up if i receive more than a hundred likes on this video i will also do a video about on how to solder everything on your own so check this out and leave me a like and see you on the next one peace out